in this video, I really want to talk about and explore the topic of what was a castle. Arguably the most quintessential part of medieval history and arguably the first thing when most people think about the medieval period, what comes to mind first? The castle. So what was a castle? That's coming up. G'day everyone, my name is Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear, you'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes, you'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture, you'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyse historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might want to consider subscribing. Throughout the classical period and with the Greeks, the Egyptians and the Romans, we see the rise of fortified cities, hill forts and ring forts. A slight difference between each one of those, let's just talk about those very quickly. We know Rome itself was a, a walled city, uh, London itself was a walled city, we know many cities in Greece, modern day Turkey uh, and in various parts of um, the modern Middle East uh, there were, were walled cities and these cities were built uh, with stone obviously such as Jerusalem um, to protect them from uh, outside invasions and incursions. Ring forts were a very different thing and they tended to be uh, well outside those three main cultures. So there were in, in Western Europe we see the rise of the ring fort and a ring fort was essentially a small community at most really a farmstead with perhaps some additional families to it surrounded by what was called a palisade or a, a wooden wall. Sometimes that wall would have had a, a walk, perhaps even uh, some sort of a tower. And these you tend to see uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout Western Europe and you tend to see them in, especially in, in some of the so-called Celtic areas. Uh, Gaul, for example. The hill forts were different again and these particularly arose after the fall of Rome. Uh, we see some classical examples from the UK. Uh, these hill forts were really quite amazing and really quite astonishing when you think about the technology of the day versus what was achieved. Um, Offers Dyke was arguably uh, as big a build as the Great Wall of China. Uh, and we'll do a video on that one day, but that's probably several years away. I'd love to go back. Uh, to Wales and the UK and actually film on site, on location and actually take you through it. I have been to various parts of it before and I've walked many parts of it in stages so let's, um, let's do that one day. Progressively through the early medieval period we tend to see the arise in what is today England of the Anglo-Saxon Burr. We'll be doing another video uh, about these specifically later. The Burr was a very different sort of organisation. Uh, it was walled, it was protected by dikes, uh, it was fortified, walled, often towers, uh, and within that was a, a full-fledged community including places of worship, the churches, you had um, markets, you had all kinds of different things. You usually have cattle markets, you'd have uh, an abattoir perhaps, blacksmiths and uh, carpenters. You'd also have a small garrison and beyond that you'd have a place for the, the local chieftain if you like. And this is a very interesting concept because some people would argue that this is in fact a castle within itself, but we'll explore the Anglo-Saxon burrs in more detail later on. So beyond this, you start to see the rise within uh, the very late 9th and more so through the 10th century in what is modern day France of the Motten Bailey Castle. The Motten Bailey Castle was really, really, really interesting because it drew together two key features. It drew together 
not only the concepts of a ring fort, so we have that small community with the blacksmith, often a church, often um, a small garrison, often quite a number of different families could live within. But you also had the drawing in of a, a watchtower and that was a, an actual residence as well in many examples. So let's define what a castle is. A castle is not only uh, a military stronghold and garrison. The second key aspect of a castle is it has a formal residence for the local lord, chieftain, earl, baron, whatever it might be. Thirdly, you had a, a place of governance. This was where that earl or baron or chieftain would be able to look through local law issues, confront local um, uprisings or local bandits, lo that kind of an issue as well. And at his disposal, typically a him, there are examples of um, females who would run uh, the affairs of the castle. And we'll talk about who actually worked within a castle because this is a very different construct to the previously mentioned uh, sort of example. But the advantages of a small castle are that it could be built fairly quickly. The Normans especially would typically employ slave labour to construct their Mott and Bailey castles. But you had a phenomenal number of advantages with these, these small castles. And let's take a look at a few of those. A Mott and Bailey castle would represent um, a small garrison. You'd have a place to cache larger stores of weapons, uh, spears, arrows, that kind of consumable items that an army would go through. You'd be able to cache food. Um, and equipment, you'd have a blacksmith and perhaps extra specialist people uh, employed there so that if you needed to confront a small rebellion then uh, soldiers from other garrisons could move through your Mott and Bailey and, and restock and resupply. You'd have a place to train within but especially the higher walls because they were typically four meters, so 12 feet, maybe as much as 15 feet tall. You'd have crenellations, you'd have towers, you'd have a proper gatehouse. This would be a very difficult place to attack. So an attacking force would need to significantly outnumber the force within inside that castle. And therefore you have this massive force multiplication. Uh, and because you have the advantage of the height, and the protection that the walls provide you, uh, then archers could shoot arrows and so on, and from protection and again be in a much better, uh, much stronger position uh, during that fight. You also have, um, the local populace would have no idea exactly how many knights or how many men at arms or how many other people were within the castle at any one time. So you have that kind of surprise element there, which is really great uh, from the point of view of the castle. And we, can, we know that you know, knights could position themselves within the castle and have a fairly rapid response to any issues that may arise fairly locally. So there we go. That is a basic introduction to castles. We're going to be doing a whole series on castles throughout the next Sort of six months or so there's around about 20 or so different videos we've got in different stages of planning and pre-production so really looking forward to getting into some of this and then getting into 2021 2022 we'll be touring some of the castles hopefully in europe and bringing you some uh some on-site footage from from those places i'm so really looking forward to that and I really hope that um, that's going to be some, some pretty exciting videos. Alrighty guys, really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.